Thank you for watching this video that I have sent to you before our next call. This is Vicki Carter, your student mentor, and I decided to go ahead and put together a quick recording um, before our next call, which is the degree plan call, to make that call go a little bit quicker, um, a faster, and to give you some time to play around in your degree plan and possibly look at um, some questions that you might have so our next call goes a lot smoother. So if you would please open up your own degree plan, that would be really great for you to walk through this at the same time as I'm going through some of these things. Make sure you jot down some of your notes. I will be asking you specific questions to see if you've watched this video. So I'm really hoping that you do so. Okay, the very first thing that you're gonna do after you open up your degree plan is I'm gonna ask you to go up to the top here to the contact banner. This is your contact information. You'll see that your name is here, and it should be your name, your first and last name. This particular account that I'm looking at is William Test Student. Um, if you click on that, you are going to see, I'm gonna pull it down a little bit for us, thank you. Um, you're going to see that a box pops up, and this is going to be your contact information. This information is really, really important. In particular, this box right here, your home phone number, your area code and the number that's there. It indicates that it's your primary phone number. I do ask for your phone number in our first email, but on occasions I will transpose numbers. And so I'm gonna go back into this box quite often to make sure that I'm calling you correctly. So please make sure that this is your primary contact number. You're also welcome to put in here your work number and a mobile number. I appreciate that very much. If for some reason I cannot contact you through your primary number, I'm going to look for another number, mobile or work number. If you add anything into those boxes, you're going to want to go down, and we can't see it, just one second here. You're going to want to hit update and close. Again, that's update and close. And that will make sure that any of this information that you changed in these fields, I can see them after you're done with them. A couple of things I'm going to point out in here that are very important is obviously your time zone. Um, I'm going to be looking at that when I'm going to be calling you to see you know, if, if I'm calling you at the right times. You can add an email address. Um, I do prefer to use your WGU email. I will probably only respond to your personal address once. Um, if I can't get a hold of you, I might try to contact you there. Your address is here, um, your username, your student ID number, your financial aid um, status, as well as your last portal login date is here. This section right here is empty for um, our William Test student, but it will not be for you. I go to that on occasion for students. If I cannot find them, if I haven't heard from them, I'm going to check and see if you've logged in. Um, so just be aware that that's there as well, as well as some other contact information that's important for us here at WGU. So again, if you change your phone number, your primary number on here, just remember to go down to update and close. The next part of the banner here is your student ID number. I like to tell students that your student ID number is your unique number that's assigned to you while you're here at WGU. You're going to probably want to memorize that number. Um, when you have correspondence with um, other departments, they'll be asking you for your student ID number. So it's probably in a good habit to get to know that number. Next to it is your program start date. That's the date that you start your program here at WGU. If you started in September, it's going to say September 1st. If it was August, it'll say August 1st. That start date determines your on-time progress. And we're going to look at on-time progress just in a little bit. Another section is your current term. Um, so this particular student is in his fifth term. You should be seeing a one next to that, not a five. If you see a five, I've got some alarm signals going on. No, just kidding. It should be a one. And in the parentheses is going to be your actual term date. It is in a six month block. I'm gonna probably ask you that question. So when we have our call, I'm gonna ask you to show me where your current term is and how many months that is. Um, six months seems like a lot of time, but trust me, it goes by quickly. So definitely be paying attention to that. Your planned graduation time or graduation date is set after we set your AAV, your academic activity verification. This is an important thing to pay attention to 
but I don't want you to stress out about it right away. You will see not yet selected because we have to set your AAD first and your planned graduation date will actually change each term according to how fast you go through. So that's gonna change. I want you to make sure that your program is the actual program you enrolled for. Hopefully it'll be a bachelor's of science in information technology or one of the information technology degree plans. Um, and of course, my name should be here, my email address and my phone number with my direct extension will be there as well. The one thing you will not probably be seeing is student notes and accelerated AAV. Because we're looking at this through my view, that's what we're seeing. So if you don't see these buttons here, don't worry about it. If you go over here to the far um, right side, you will not have this box as you're looking at it during your first term. You will see it after second term or after I set your AAV, your academic verification. This is your progress box. It has a scroll status bar. This status bar changes at the end of each term. So if you had transfer credits in, like William Test student did, he had five units that came in as transfers, that was already put in here. If you didn't, it would be all the way here. Then term one, once term one is completed, it's gonna put a status bar in here. And then as you go through, it's gonna continue to do that. The colors determine if you are on pace with your graduation on time progress. On time progress, I'm gonna ask you what that means. I'm not gonna give you the information right now. So I'm gonna make sure you understand what on time progress means. Another little great tool that's here I'm gonna show you is a graduation cal calculator down just a little bit it pops up in a new box and what this is is it um, will help you to calculate what your future may look like say instead of going 12 units per term and you want to go 18 units per term then you're going to complete two terms sooner and you're going to be saving yourself some money and it does change your projected graduation date this is just a toolbox it doesn't, it's not tied into anything. It's just a way for us to see what your future could look like or see how quickly you can get through this. So you're welcome to play with that. Another thing I wanna point out to you, so I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit, is this actual section right here. I'm gonna do another recording just on a course of study overview, but right now I wanna point out some of these other things to you. Um, your term, the current term that you're gonna be rolled in will be at the very top. So for our test student, obviously at six, you'll see a number one here. Your course code, this is the unique code here for WGU. This code is not comprehensive to everybody. Um, it does not correlate with other colleges that you have seen before. Instead of English 101 or Math 104, it's specific for WGU. You'll get the hang of it. I understand what this is. So if you send me an email that says SSC1, I'm going to know what you're talking about. Your course details, it's a hyperlink. Once you open into that, it's going to connect you to your actual course of study. We're going to go into that in another recording after this one. So um, I'm not going to spend too much time right here right now. Your competency unit, that is the same as um, credits earned or credits that will be earned once you complete this actual course. So for the course code of SSC1, which is General Education Social Science, it has a competency unit or a CU of one. Um, that is how we calculate how many CUs you're going to be in in a term. Um, and I'm gonna ask you the question, what your minimum requirement is for a full time to be in good standing? And I hope you answer with the correct number. So make sure you're ready for that. Um, next to it is if you are in a course that has an objective assessment, you have pre-assessments that are available to you. You only have three of these options to take it three times. So your pre-assessment is mirrors the actual objective assessment. The pre-assessment, the first time you take it, you don't need my permission. The second and the third time I have to approve. So you and I are gonna have a nice long talk about how we're gonna make sure that you're using these to the best advantage. So don't get too excited about that. We'll talk about it in the future. Your pre-assessments are gonna give you a good overview of what you need to study, and there's a way of using those correctly. As you'll see under the assessment type, there's objective assessments and performance assessments. 
I'm going to leave that alone for now because we're going to talk about it during our call. I want to make sure you understand what a objective performance is and an assessment, um, a performance assessment, sorry. Just know that's something we're going to talk about and each one of these courses will be listed as one or the other. Your assessment status, if you haven't obviously taken this one or if you had transfer credits coming, you'll see the term transfer, or when you get done with your first term, you'll see that the term if you've passed it already. The next big thing to look at is our start dates and our end dates. At the end of our program, degree program call, I'm going to talk to you about start dates and end dates. And I'm gonna stop here right now and kind of talk a little bit about start dates and end dates. Start dates and end dates are your guideposts for your course. They're not necessarily set in stone, but we're going to spend a little bit of time really focusing in on how to get you through these courses in a timely manner. And so the start date and end dates are very, very important. I have a formula that we use that will make it much easier. Um, I can preset those. Uh, and also we can um, talk about a course that maybe you want to do first and the start date and end date will move that course in line in your term um, above all the others. So we'll talk some more about that. That is the end of the degree program overview. When we have our phone call, I'm going to still do a screen share with you, but I'm going to ask you questions. So be prepared to answer the questions. You're welcome to go back and start and listen to this um, over and over again. Um, it's going to be your first, or I should say probably your second pop quiz, because I probably have asked you a couple things in our last phone call. So please write down your questions that you have for me and um, listen to the next video that is in your email, and that's going to be going over the course of study overview. Okay, thank you.